Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Yeah, I don't really care who you are or what blaster quality this thing has. That's fun. This is the Dart Zone Omnia. <laughs> So the Omnia is a 2023 release out of Dart Zone in the Max series, which just confuses the crap out of me because it says Omnia Pro on the blaster, not Omnia Max. I am going to call this the Omnia Max anyway, or the Max Omnia anyway, because that's what it says on the box, and that's what it's listed on the website. This is a fully automatic selector switch enabled magazine fed flywheel blaster that was kind of Dart Zone's belated answer to the Strife X and is very comparable to the Nerf Regulator. So is this thing better? Better or worse than the regulator considering it's only ten dollars more the fact that i'm asking if it's worse should set off some red flags to you guys right now but we're gonna ignore all those right now and start with the design this stock this top sight this front sight and the magazine are all removable so for simplicity's sake i'm gonna take all of those out to talk about design everyone says this thing looks like an fdl3 and i do not see it i don't know what these people are talking about this blaster almost sort of kinda has the same or similar shape to an FDL-3, but by no means is this thing an exact copy of the FDL-3. I do not see that when I look at this blaster. I see something that could kind of be comparable to it, but honestly, this blaster looks more like some kind of offset version of the Strife. I mean, it doesn't look like an FDL-3. I don't see an FDL-3 when I look at this thing. And another thing to note, why is there a bug in here? Another thing to note is that this blaster does have a stock attachment point, making it one of only two fully automatic blasters right now that have a stock attachment point. This and the regulator. Why don't full auto blasters ever have stock attachment points? I don't understand. But the design itself is actually very cool looking. There's lots of little stripes and stuff all over this that make it look super cool and aerodynamic. I also like the fact that the top rail is angled forwards for no reason. That just looks pretty cool. The, the supports are also angled forwards just to give off that sort of racing stripe aerodynamic vibe. It's hilarious how aerodynamically designed this thing is when it's a giant chungus block shaped blaster. The stock this blaster comes with is one of the best stocks ever created because it is a collapsible buffer tube style stock that just clips onto a stock attachment point and can be completely removed. So you can put whatever Magpul style buffer tube stocks you want on the stock attachment point. Though you can't put this stock on other buffer tube stocks because the imprint in there is square. So it won't fit into a traditionally round shaped buffer tube attachment point, which is really annoying because the stock is Really good, let's move on to the ergonomics, speaking of which, the main grip of this blaster is humongous. Look how big this main grip is. Why is my finger on the trigger? Look how big this main grip is. It's a very comfortable, very smooth main grip. Usually Dart Zone doesn't nail grips properly, but they definitely did with this one. I think this blaster is extremely comfortable. The stock is a very good length and feels wonderful to brace against your shoulder. Very, very comfortable, very solid. Putting your cheek right here is very nice. And putting your hand right up here or right up here is a super comfortable experience. Honestly, this is an extremely comfy flywheeler, all things considered. I love the way this blaster feels to hold. Oh, it's great. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a selector switch enabled magfed flywheeler. So you put your magazine in and then you select one of the three positions. The first position is semi-automatic. The second position is three round burst. And the third position is fully automatic. After you've picked your position, you rev the blaster with the rev trigger and then you pull the main trigger to fire it. Second position. Third position. Let me talk about the triggers and the smoothness of operation. First of all, putting the mag in and taking the mag out is pretty smooth. It's a very nicely designed mag well that the only thing I could improve upon it is making it flared so it's a bit easier to guide the magazine in. Even then, it's not necessarily hard to get the mag in. It's still worth noting though. The mag release on the other hand is really weird. As you can see, it's very similar to the Hyperfires mag release where you have to push your middle finger forwards and then like push it in, but you don't push it in. You pull it down. So the mag release moves like this. 
And that does not feel right, because when you're holding this blaster, you just want to put your middle finger forwards and pull down, but that doesn't work. You need an extra step where you put your middle finger forwards, push it down, and then pull the magazine out. Or actually, you could just mag drop it. This blaster mag drops very easily. As for the rev trigger, listen, Dart Zone, you have one chance to make a good rev trigger, and this is your last chance. Every flywheel blaster you've ever made has an awful rev trigger, so is this one good? Yes, yes it is. This is how you do a big rev trigger properly. It's big enough to get two fingers on it, which means that there's no weird shapes or anything that dig partially into your ring finger. You can comfortably fit two fingers on this rev trigger, and it's very clicky to pull in. It feels very, very nice to pull this rev trigger in. Well done, Dart Zone. You finally made a good rev trigger. I'm so happy. As for the main trigger, it is basically just pulling an electronic switch, so uh, it's really clicky, but there's nothing to note. And on that note, the rev up time of this blaster is really slow. It takes a full second to rev this blaster up all the way, which doesn't seem bad, but if you consider the Strife X's rev up time, it revs up in about a quarter of a second. So it is revving up four times faster than this blaster, or God forbid something like a Phoenix 2.0 revs up instantly so fast that by the time you pull the trigger all the way down, it's fully revved up and able to shoot a dart. This one you have to wait a full second to rev up, which is a big disadvantage for using a kind of modified or professional level flywheel blaster. Now let's address the real juice in this problem. The selector switch. Seems like a really good idea because you're basically emulating the best part of a regulator and the whole reason to buy a regulator, which was being able to effortlessly switch from an electronically controlled semi-auto system to a three round burst to a full auto system. The problem is the bog is so bad that the semi-automatic and three round burst are completely unusable and you will never ever use them. You will put this in the full auto position or in the off position. That's it. You will never touch either of these two middle positions, guaranteed. Let me explain what I mean. Let me show you the bog of semi-automatic. It takes about a fifth of a second to fire a dart and the three round burst is just as bad. That's horrible. And in comparison, the fully automatic is so much better. It revs, oh my gosh, shut the hell up. The fully automatic shoots instantly. So why do the other two firing modes have such terrible delay on them? It doesn't make any sense at all because they're all running through the same board. All three of these firing modes are going through an electronic board that regulates how many times the pusher can actuate. The only difference is that on the third position, there's no limiter to how many times the pusher will actuate, unlike the three round burst in the semi-automatic. Is the board that they're using so bad that it actually takes that long to register one or three rotations? Are you serious? That is like the, the, the most basic of basic problems to fix when it comes to electronic circuits. How could they screw up that badly? But if you think that's the end of the screw ups, we're just getting started. From an outside perspective, the Omnia looks like a good deal. But when you look at the technical stuff of this blaster, it becomes atrociously bad. Let me give you an example of the thing that is so bad about this blaster. The freaking micro switches. Yes, the micro switches are really clicky and very satisfying to pull in. The problem is that they're not good, they're cheap, which is why this blaster is so cheap. It's only $80 for something that should be closer to $130 to $150. You are taking off half the price, and as such, you're taking off half the quality. And the thing is, they didn't sacrifice the quality on stuff like the plastic or something that you could honestly sacrifice quality on. They took it out on the internal quality. The motors of this blaster are very cheap and have a tendency to burn out as do the micro switches. So this blaster can fail in several different ways. It can fail on the motors, the micro switches, or the board. That's three different points of failure, four different points of failure actually, because there's two different micro switches. And if something does fail, you have to figure out what's wrong with it to fix it. 
Why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? People complained about the Nerf Strife X being $120, but the thing is, the Strife X is reliable and made out of stuff that you can trust. This blaster is cheaper, but it's made out of stuff that you can't trust. I have this blaster and it works perfectly fine right now, so really I personally have no right to be complaining about any of these problems, but I do because this is a big problem that lots of people will face if you choose to run this blaster as your full auto primary or even your semi-auto primary. The concept of the Omnia was the do everything flywheeler, you get this and then you don't have to get any other flywheelers, but because of the egregious number of problems the internals can have, there is no no way to run it like your do-everything flywheeler. You would have to modify the internals so much that you're better off just getting a regulator or a strife and putting a smart board into either of those. Wow. And before we get onto the firing demo, I want to point out one big controversy this blaster faced upon release. The first generation of the Omnia did not work. Darts on put the flywheel cage in at a slight angle, which caused all the darts to veer to the right for absolutely no reason. Now, they were very quick to fix this problem, but only after they had already sent sample Omnias out to reviewers so that they could get videos out. So how did Dart Zone handle the situation? Well, they did fix the problem, and this is a functional Omnia second gen, but they sent emails to the people they sent the blasters to asking them not to post reviews on the blasters until after they had already gotten the revised versions. That is a terrible way to solve your problems because it would have been just as easy for them to say, hey, just letting you all know, we are sending out an updated version that fixes a critical flaw the original version has. If you do post a review, make sure to acknowledge this. So that would have fixed all of these problems. That would have addressed that yes, there is a better version coming or addressed a better version in the video itself, but they didn't do that. They asked people not to take a look at the blaster on YouTube so that they would avoid having themselves look bad. That's not very good, and I think everyone should point out the fact that they did that because that is honestly really scummy marketing. I understand that they were very polite about it and they were very understanding about it in the emails, but still, they shouldn't have sent that email out in the first place, regardless of how nice it was. With all that said, let's fire this nugget. Because of how complicated this thing is having three different modes of firing, the firing course I've set up is far more elaborate than any other traditional firing course. So you'll get more firing demo for your buck. Let's get into it. That counts. Woo! 
So what mod potential does the Omnia have? Well, not really too much. It is basically a modified blaster out of the box. The only thing you could really do to upgrade this blaster is fixing up the internals and redoing the internals to make it better. But at that point, you may as well just do a regulator overhaul or even a strife overhaul with a smart board in it. So there's not much reason to mod this blaster and as such, there aren't very many mod kits for it. But what do I think of the Omnia? Well, the Omnia is fun. I will give it that. But the thing is, this blaster really doesn't appeal to everybody. It won't appeal to hardly anybody because it just doesn't work. There's a lot of ways this blaster can fail, and as such, I can't really recommend anybody take a look at it unless you really like the aesthetics and want to do a full overhaul on the internals. In that case, sure, it's a comfortable shell, it looks great, it feels good, it's got a lot of the physical stuff right there front and center, but the problem is what's going on on the inside of the blaster. Another thing that I really need to tell y'all is that this blaster needs a thumbscrew, like I've put in, because it uses a 2S Lion battery, which you can see right there. And you're going to be putting the screw in and taking the screw out over and over and over and over again. And then the seven or eight times that I did that through the testing of this blaster to make this video, the screw began to strip itself just that amount of times. So yeah, they cheaped out on the screw itself. So get a thumb screw. If you want to buy this blaster, get a thumb screw. With all that said, if you do want this blaster, I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.